Welcome to part four of the talk about rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, and other uses for the complete graph. So now we're really getting into the complete graph. Right here on the screen, you can see from last time we discussed the graph that we had, K5, which represented our rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock game. And we saw that it could be decomposed into two Hamilton cycles. And in fact, as long as n is odd, you can always decompose a complete graph into um, Hamilton cycles. So that's great. But what are we going to do when n is even? Well, from the rest of the talk on, we're going to just look at the case when n is even. So far, we were trying to build generalized rock, paper, scissors games. So we needed n odd. But from now on, we're moving on to the case where n is even. And in this case, we can't exactly decompose it into Hamilton cycles precisely. And the reason is very simple. If you think about a complete graph on, say, four vertices, then you realize that any given vertex has degree three. And those three edges cannot be properly decomposed into to, uh, several Hamilton cycles because every Hamilton cycle will use up two of the edges. So you use up two of the edges and then you have an odd one left out. So when n is even, you're going to have to decompose into Hamilton cycles and also something else that's left over. Well, the thing that's left over is called a perfect matching. And you may not have heard of a perfect matching before, so I'll show you an example. This is K6. Well, so far I've only drawn six dots, but this is K6. All of the possible edges are drawn between these six vertices. And in fact, I've chosen to draw a single vertex in the center because of the example that I'm going to be showing you. So if you look at a perfect matching in this graph, there's lots of them, but a particular one could be this one. So these purple edges represent a perfect matching. You've paired up each of the vertices with another vertex using one of the edges. So we have a perfect matching and apparently the rest of the graph can be decomposed into Hamilton cycles. Yes, in fact it can. If you look at the red edges that I'm drawing in, we can trace out a Hamilton cycle. And then if you look at the blue edges that remain, the light blue edges, they also form a Hamilton cycle. So we've just decomposed K6 into a perfect matching and two Hamilton cycles. And in fact, when n is even, it turns out that you can always do this. So Kn, when n is even, always admits a decomposition into Hamilton cycles and a perfect matching. Well, you can actually do even more. And let's take a look at K6 as our example. If you think about this example, we have a single perfect matching and then these two Hamilton cycles. Well, it turns out that we can do something like this. We can take our perfect matching and then we can find another perfect matching like this one. All I've done is I've rotated the, the purple perfect matching into a red perfect matching. And basically the idea is that K6 will admit a decomposition into perfect matchings so that every pair of perfect matchings together will form a Hamilton cycle. So if you look at the two that are drawn so far and you trace out the purple and the red edges, you'll see that you get a Hamilton cycle, a cycle that touches every vertex exactly once. In this case, it's a six cycle. Well, what happens if we rotate this one factor again? Well, we get this green one and you can check that the green with the red is a Hamilton cycle and also the green with the purple is a Hamilton cycle. That's good. Do it again. And you check that the yellow with the green and the yellow with the red and the yellow with the purple are all Hamilton cycles. And again, you do the last one and you check all the possible matchings. So here, what we have is five different perfect matchings and any two of those five together forms a Hamilton cycle. That's actually 10 Hamilton cycles. So this is really amazing that we can do this. And this is something that's called a perfect one factorization. Now, we might think that it's called perfect because it uses perfect matchings, but that is not the case. In fact, the word one factorization means that we were able to partition or decompose the edges into perfect matchings. And perfect matchings have another name. They're also called one factors. So that's why this is called a one factorization. Having this really, really particularly special property that every pair of the one factors has to form a Hamilton cycle, that's what makes it perfect. So now on the next slide, what I want to show you is that you can easily get one factorizations which are not perfect. So let's take a look at the same exact construction that we've just given, 
for any even, so we'll just take K10. Here are 10 vertices, and again, I've drawn one of the vertices in the center and nine of them round the outside. And if you think about the purple perfect matching, or one factor that we started with last time, this is a pretty obvious generalization. And what we do is we take this and we just rotate it nine times, and we will get a one factorization for this graph K10. And this will always work for a one factorization of Kn where n is even. Now the question is, is this going to be a perfect one factorization? Well, let's take one rotation. So I rotate this thing once to get a red one factor, or perfect matching, however you like to call it, and you can trace out the red and the purple edges and you get a Hamilton cycle. And you may want to say that, you've go that you're going to create a perfect one factorization, but this is not true. You can't jump the gun. You're going to have to really check every single pair of these one factors. And if you look again at the purple and you consider one of the rotations by three, so let's say this green one, now take a look closely at this. We are looking for a Hamilton cycle, which is a single cycle that touches every single vertex. Well, we don't get that. What we get instead is this four cycle, which I've drawn sort of bolded, and what remains is a six cycle. So we get a four cycle and separately another six cycle. That is not a Hamilton cycle. So because we found a pair of one factors that together did not form a Hamilton cycle, this is not perfect. It's still a one factorization, but it's not perfect. But we don't need to be sad for K10. There's another way to find a perfect one factorization. So it's just that this particular one is not the construction. Well, the construction was really nice, right? It was super easy to do. We just rotate this nice one factor and it always works out to be a one factorization. And in fact, there's a really nice time when it is perfect. When n is equal to p plus one, where p is an odd prime, then you'll get a perfect one factorization. You might find it a little funny that I'm saying p is an odd prime. You might be under the impression that all primes are odd, but that's not necessarily true because remember, p equals two is also prime. So this all sounds fun. We can find perfect one factorizations for K6 and for K10. I didn't give you an example of one, but I told you that you can. And in fact, in 1964, Kotzig decided to make a conjecture. So he basically is guessing that the complete graph of even order for all orders bigger than or equal to four will have a perfect one factorization. And he didn't just guess it randomly. He guessed this in 1964 after showing that this complete graph of order n where n is equal to p a prime plus one, that that will always have a perfect one factorization. And he did a lot of other work. So that's why he made this conjecture. If we look at all of the even numbers from four up until say 56, and we highlight in green the values for which we know that the value is one more than an odd prime, that's this infinite family that we're getting here that Kotzig found. Now, believe me, there it goes on forever, yes, but there are lots and lots and lots of values to the right of this line which are unknown. That should be pretty clear. Now, in the 70s, Anderson also showed that another very famous construction for one factorizations will work out to be perfect when you have n equal to two times an odd prime. So that fills in some of the gaps, right? Like number 10 here was two times five. So because five is an odd prime, we're able to fill in that one. And same thing for 22 and 26 like that. Well, we still have several that are unknown. Those were 16, 28, 36, 40, and 50. But over the next couple of decades, a lot of different mathematicians solved these and they found perfect one factorizations for these values of Kn as well. The last one was in 1989 and that was for K40. Then there was a long gap, almost 20 years. And finally, in 2008, 52 was done. That was done by Wolf. And that was quite a lot of work in um, over about four decades to find all of these values. So the first unknown value is 56. We have no idea whether or not there really is a perfect one factorization for that value of n. And of course, this goes on and there are lots and lots of unknown values. And in fact, there are several sporadic known values, but they're very large and they're a little bit complicated. And I want to point out to you, though, that finding these, these things is a really, really hard task. 
they're very rare. If you look just at K-12, so 12 vertices, you can find more than 520 million non-isomorphic one factorizations. But not all of them have the perfect property. In fact, only five of them are perfect one factorizations. So they are extremely rare and this is a hard problem. So this completes part four of the talk. See us next time to find out why P1Fs are so incredibly useful in part five. See you there.